When Con first put forward the designs, uh, they looked huge on paper. But when it was installed on site, you can see that the artist got it just right. It's a simple and impressionistic sculpture. You don't want one with a lot of detail on it when people can't actually walk up to it and inspect it. They get an impression out of the car windows as they drive by, and this sculpture just meets that need. The tallest of those reeds are six metres high and there's over 1,500 of them. They make a sound and that was important to Con, the way the different reeds hit each other and clattered. He called it chattering, as though they're having a dialogue. He chose his colours, red, black and white, as traditional Maori colours to emphasise the Pacific environment that he wanted to stress and that's why he gave it the name Pacific Grass. I worked out with a little bit of research that this was I think the second windiest recorded place in New Zealand and so really I thought well um, this piece needs to be extremely simple it needs to be of a scale and then you know the location here being near the yacht club um, there was a nice relationship to um, the masts all clanking together in the wind so really that was how it came about so this idea that it wouldn't do a uh, frivolous sort of a, a dance with many moves but it would be a singular kind of a, an object that would sort of grow in presence over time. This is a sleeping, iconic piece, you know, it's not all bells and whistles dancing about, it's like a bulletproof design, it's, it spills the wind, it just, can't, it just keeps on coming back up like a giant blade of grass. The whole area has got lots of instruments around wind and aircraft and wind measurements and things. So I thought, right, okay, I'm gonna make, I'm, I'm gonna make a sculpture that looks like a, an instrument, actually. And so I was trying to think about converting the speed of the wind into a color. So if it was a red day, it was reasonably windy, and if it was a violet day, it was pretty quiet. And if it was nothing on, of course, it was dead still, which is very unusual. When the rotor's spinning, and there's an optical reader, and the optical reader then sends a signal to the computer and tells, tells the computer, turn on six rings or turn on three rings. And the slower, or the less wind there is, of course, the less rings are lit up. And the higher the wind, the more rings are lit up. The idea of how we read our environment was really important. And because we now live in cars and we, in bubbles, we don't really experience the outside world very much. So it was a way of converting the outside world into a, an interior. That was really what it was about. When I go up, I haven't seen a tree uh, before my uh, fifth birthday. All the trees were uh, cut down and we didn't know what a tree was. But we collected all sorts of um, pieces of glass and, and colorful cloths and, and iron and made our own trees. And I called that urban trees. I needed an engineer to help me to work things out 
and I met uh, Alan Brown. We made all sorts of models and some were working, some not, and some looked all right, most time not. Thus we had to find uh, the right solution and we made uh, small models and we drove in the car around um, Wellington and I put it out the window and it was rotating, it was working and that was something to celebrate. People who are passing by they can see what is, uh, what is going on and also lots of comments from people who live on the hills here. Yeah, they, uh, someone told me they had three children and the children didn't watch TV anymore. They stood for the window and looked at the sculpture and said, oh, it is going. And that one is not going. And that one is going. This, that, is, that is a great thing that uh, people love it. It gave me an opportunity to really think about the kinetics and, and how wind could produce both sound and light. The form is, I mean, it's based in some respects on the windsock. I also wanted to have a, an obvious turbine feel to it, so it's um, being a wind, a wind generator, um, but also to be look a little bit like bird beaks, so it's like a, a group of sentinels perhaps, you know, watching over the bay. Each turbine produces its own LED lighting as well as having sound producers on the front. These are wind flutes. Once it faces into the prevailing wind, they'll activate. And they'll, depending on the force of the wind, you know, they'll, they'll sing at different strengths and produce harmonics and so forth. And originally I started out just thinking about sound and then it just seemed so logical to use the turbine in some way to can, you know, create a, a lighting effect also. The end result of 10 years on this project is just a magnificent art contribution to Wellington and to New Zealand. We've got this meridian wind sculpture walkway, five pieces, large in scale, each responding in a totally unique way to the wind. It's absolutely world class. I don't think there's anything like it anywhere else in the globe. And it's just going to be marvelous for millions of people over a long period of time to enjoy it all. We're very lucky to have it.